Hello and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received from its 25th dementia. This was gleaned through my last hypnosis session. In this particular session, Lorraine was my hypnotist. And uh, so I'll be referring to her. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking of myself under hypnosis. So the answers are coming from the 25th dimension. But before I start reading from the transcript, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, share if you think it will add value to others. And also please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Also, I would love to hear if the stuff resonates with you. So do please leave me a comment below because I'm always interested in seeing whenever, where everybody's at with things. We are definitely going through a lot, so. Lorraine. Is the concept of Taurus, the energy field around our bodies, real and correct? Does it look like a self-feeding loop? Where is it born from and what is its purpose? Me. So we are, yes, of course, we're all energy. So we have energy fields. But our energy field is not just what you draw in pictures. That's, you know, maybe just wide or whatever it is. The energy field of a light worker might extend over the entire planet. How do you measure that? So yeah, I mean, we do, again, we try to give ourselves explanations for certain things, but it's not quite the way that we explain it. Our energy field, not only we are able to expand or contract our energy, so it looks different at different times. It just depends on how uh, in touch we are with that how aware we are of doing that. We don't even have to be consciously aware of doing it. Many light workers don't realize they're holding up the consciousness of entire cities without even thinking about it. So how big is their energy field, right? We like to quantify things on this planet. We like to pretend everybody's the same. So everybody has this much space around them, it does, but it doesn't work that way. We are always different at every point. We could be different this morning. I could be different from this evening in terms of my energy field. At the end of the day, the energy field doesn't change that much because we hold it over time. But depending on where I put my focus, I, it can absolutely vary. I mean, it's alive, right? Our energy field is everybody. We're all part, we're all one. So our energy field expands. We can expand our energy field through other people. And this is what we do. So it's not quite as black and white as what you were asking me, how we like to explain it here. Lorraine, thank you. Why do some people see auras and why can they see some people's auras and not other people's auras? Me. So again, just like we were talking about empaths and they're referring to a previous video that I made earlier in the hypnosis session. So I split up these videos, otherwise we'd be way too much information. So again, just like we were talking about empaths, some people like to think that they can see certain things. And because you like to think you can see certain things, you can see them, just like seeing angels. Some people want to believe it's okay for them to have the idea that they can see angels. And therefore, they will see angels, you can. Some people like to see, to think that they could see auras and they can. And maybe they can only see it when they feel a certain way, when they're in a certain mood. So that's when they will see it. So absolutely, this is possible, yeah. And you don't have to see somebody's energy as an aura, but some people like to see it that way. Lorraine, Clea would like to know if we ever meet anyone we've never met before. Me, no, we all know each other. Now, can we on this planet go and meet somebody from the other team that we haven't really hung out with? but we truly all know each other at a very basic level. We're all friends. So it might be someone you've not made, not made an agreement with. That's what we would mean. We would mean by you, I'm sorry guys, uh, this is a transcript speech to text sometimes, it's super iffy. So <laughs> try to read through the, the typos and whatnot. It might be someone you've not made an agreement with. That's what we mean by you meeting someone you don't know. Somebody where you're just like, let's see what happens out of this. And if you're interested in figuring it out, you can. We don't have to live through agreements all the time. We can leave room for surprises. If we change our mind, want to try something different, we can do that. We can do whatever we want. Lorraine, 
Who does Cleon know that is an NPC besides this one person I already know? Um, and by the way, guys, you know this, that I only leave questions in here, even though they seem to be referring to me, I leave them in here because they actually have a universal message or a message that applies to more than just me. And uh, they teach us a lot when I ask these questions. So that's why I'm reading this. So it has nothing to do with me and who I know. Me. So a lot of people in Clea's circle are actually leaving and so are becoming NPCs. And so there will be more and more. So she knows a lot of people, but in general, she wasn't really hanging out with NPCs before. She wouldn't be friends. She would not be friends with NPCs. It's just something that's going to happen more and more as the souls leave, as the essences leave. So this is the situation with everybody. First of all, we don't really hang out with NPCs in general because, again, we are trying to learn and we don't really learn and we help other people learn uh, through our joint experience and uh, and even in my video about uh, message from god if you've seen this uh when the music basically god uh asked me to finish to help somebody finish their song because we are all songs we're all music and so they helped me to finish their song it means that it's two essences my essence and the essence embodied in the body of this person and together we are creating you know, uh, a new tonality in the song or a new part of the song. And that's how it works. So we wouldn't necessarily be making friends with NPCs in general. However, this does happen. Uh, sometimes it does happen. I mean, obviously, I'm generalizing in this case. But most people we hang out with uh, are SSS because these are basically our teammates that we've made agreements with, not contracts, because we can change our minds at any time, but agreements with said, you know, loosely, okay, here's how we're going to play it in the next, the next time around. Lorraine, Leah would like to know if she's being present enough with her daughter and, there's, and if there's anything she should be doing differently with her in general or to prepare, prepare her for what's coming. And again, I figured that some of you might be dealing with the same situation. And so I wanted to leave this in here. Me, she doesn't need to prepare for what's coming. Her daughter is totally fine. Her daughter is a little master, so it's okay. She could spend more time with her. She could pay more attention to her. Of course, that's always the case. In fact, it would be good for Clea as well to just focus more on fun things than just working all the time. We are very grateful. We're very happy that she's focusing on us so much. This is coming at the cost of fun. Now, it is a very special time in history. We've been planning this for a long time. And so, of course, it's all hands on deck right now because this is accelerating. But at the same time, it's okay for Claire to take an afternoon off every once in a while. So I hope you do this as well. Lorraine, thank you. Are the experiences that Claire has had on earth in this life a prerequisite for her to arrive at the present moment, like a chain of events set up so that today she could do what she's meant to do, like connect with you and spread this information? Or are those just things she wanted to experience and she would have ended up in the same place, reawakening her spirituality and connecting with you, no matter what she experienced. Me, both. She wanted to have these experiences, these experiences that she chose. She could have chosen anything else really, but she also wanted to, at some point, consciously reconnect to what she's here to do. So she has done both. She set this up for herself, like we all do, we set up our own circumstances. So she wanted to, she chose these experiences, but at the same time, they served her. She chained them so that they would culminate in this particular event, which is conscious connection or reconnection or awareness of connection with us. So again, guys, everything we do, we set up for ourselves. We all, the present moment, whatever present, the present moment looks like to you, uh, the, uh, there, there's a reason why you're here right now. This didn't just happen. We are not victims of anything outside of us. We are the ones that are shaping all of reality. Lorraine. Okay, I would like to know how I can gain a greater ability to listen to my higher 25th self, me. Not everyone is meant to connect directly to the 25th. What that means is that, again, we get stuck on a connection looking a certain way. Some people find pride, for example, in saying, I connect to angels. Some people find pride in saying, I connect to source. It doesn't really matter. The question is, how can you be more aware? You're always connected. You're connected all across to the 25th and to source. 
The question is, how can you be more aware of your connection? You're very well aware of your connection and your higher self is passing on the information that you need. All the information that you need is already at your fingertips. Lorraine, thank you. Is it of any benefit for me to continue doing my YouTube videos at this time if we are so close to bringing this matrix down? And again, this seems like a personal message to Lorraine and it isn't, not only because I know a ton of people who will be watching this who do have YouTube channels and we're all going through the same emotions as we do these. Uh, we're all wondering, okay, what's the point? What, what am I doing? But also because it doesn't have to be a YouTube channel. Whatever activity you're doing, I think you'll find uh, benefit from this, uh, from this answer. Me. That's what Claire wanted to know. That's why she's asked all these questions. You don't have to, but if this is a pleasure to you and it allows you to focus, because remember, we speak these messages, but these messages are also for us. If you actually listen to what you say and you apply that to your life, then this is helpful. This is beneficial. You don't have to put out videos. It's not going to make any difference. Now, the people will feel your energy anyway. People feel your energy. You don't have to use the collective consciousness of the internet. But the most important thing is that you heed your own messages. If you're doing that and you have pleasure putting out videos, time does not matter. You can slow down time if you want to. You can do whatever you want. So if this is a pleasure to you and you're actually listening, you're not intending these messages just for other people, then yeah, absolutely. Then enjoy your YouTube channel. Lorraine, I've been doing them because they were pure joy and fun to do. And I knew I was talking to myself and I always was inspired. But the last two weeks, I've not been inspired at all. So this is why I asked, because I feel like it's more of a struggle than it is a pleasure. I would also like to know if there is any purpose at all for me to try to market my crystal essences, given that things are moving and accelerating. Okay, I think that I might have taken out the second part of this question because this doesn't relate to you, but I left in, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the answer to the first part, which is she's basically uh, experiencing resistance, which again, I, it's not just her. I know a lot of people who are, and she wants to know, should I, you know, what can I do? You know, I'm, I'm not inspired. So the answer here, me. So in response to your struggle question, which was a statement, but it's really a question, we would recommend that you do not do anything in struggle because that's the energy you're going to be putting out. And the question is, why are you struggling? This is what we would ask you to look at has nothing to do with a YouTube channel, has nothing to do with making a video. Making a video takes no time. What is it that you struggle with you? I'm sorry, what is it that's a struggle to you? Lorraine, I have no inspiration. I have nothing I wanna say, me. Words don't really matter. You don't have to say anything. If you already know, you see. These videos are a way for us to focus on a certain energy. If you already know you are there, you don't need words to help you focus. You're already focused. Lorraine. Great, thank you. Okay, do you have any final messages for Clea? And this is where we go. This was the end of my session. So I go into several final messages for multiple groups. So I'm gonna read them all, including the one that seems to be for me because again, it has a broad application. Me, you still doubt us sometimes. And they were laughing. And you know this information is not coming from you because you have no idea what we're gonna say. And yet you still doubt us sometimes and that's okay. This is why you're here because you ask questions and you always doubt everything. However, whether you doubt or not, you're doing the job you came to do. You did well in doing the plant medicine that we recommend that you do. The signal has been sent. The last phase has started. And this is going to crumble a lot faster. And we know that you're ready. So all in all, good job. And we will laugh about this. And they were laughing already when you get to New York. So they're referring here to uh, the plant medicine. I, I made a video about this, the one message from God. Uh, I will link it below in case you haven't seen it. But uh, again, the reason I left it in yours is because a lot of us, we are doubting everything. We don't know what's going on. Or we think we don't know what's going on. All of us know exactly what's going on. And the thing is, give yourself a break. Pat yourself on the back. We've done so much work. These are historical times in the multiverse. And we're all here at this time for a reason. Aligned exactly where we're going next. So 
you know, let's just at least give ourselves the benefit of the doubt that something is going on. So we don't always feel like we're not doing enough or, or that can be right or whatever we, we sabotage our thoughts with, you know, whatever disempowering thoughts we allow ourselves to hold. Lorraine, do you have any final messages for me? Me. Lorraine, you've had a very twisted, is what you perceive as twisted, story on this planet, and you still don't understand why some of it happened. You're forcing yourself. You're trying to be love and light. You're forcing yourself to accept certain things, but you have not understood why they happened or why they happened to you. It's work that you'll be able to do very quickly when you get to New Earth. So we would recommend that for now, you just let it go and enjoy what is without expecting to be one way or the other. You don't have to be any which way. You want to be angry tomorrow, be angry tomorrow, enjoy it. It's all part of who you are and you're perfect as you are. There is nothing that needs to be changed. You will never have an ability to experience what you experienced here ever again. So in that sense, there is much that we are going to cherish even from this screwed up life that we've experienced here in the last few incarnations. And there's really nothing to add here. I think this resonates with, with many, many people. I know it resonates with me for sure. Lorraine, thank you. Final messages for the 12,000, me. The 12,000 have been activated. The last phase won't last very long. And even though it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on and it might be rough from a 3D perspective to go through some of the ups and downs. The truth is, this is the easiest piece for you to do. You have been training forever to do this and you don't have to do conflicting jobs anymore, like holding up the grid while taking it down. This is actually gonna be exhilarating for you. So we are here, this is it. This is the time we've been waiting for and you have done a wonderful job. So hang in there, not much longer now. Lorraine, I have one really quick question to insert in here. When will the people that are going to New Earth, there are not the 12,000 be living, leaving? Me. About the same time the 12,000 are going to leave, within a few minutes of the last person leaving for New Earth. So the people going to New Earth, they will go this summer. And soon after that, we're taking this down. It's about at the same time. But you are going to be the last group. You're gonna be the last group, so we have to wait for the people to be picked up by the aliens first. Lorraine, great, thank you. Do you have any final messages for humanity at large? Me. It's been a rough ride, but it also has been fun in many ways. Not as fun as we wanted it to be, but fun nonetheless. Not just in this incarnation. We have had fun incarnations here. And we would like you to remember this when you move on. That it's not just the last few years or this last life that we've lived here that matters. It's everything we have done. This experiment will be talked about forever. And we have been wanting to be part of this. The entire experiment of Earth has been a miracle in many ways. And while it has been painful in many ways, we are very grateful for having had the opportunity to be here to play on this planet. And we're taking it down, obviously, because it has become too painful and too boring. But let's not forget, we've also, we've also learned a lot. And this will serve us well for eons to come mm -hmm. until we decide to go back to the 25th. And we've all paid a big service to the 25th because of the knowledge we've acquired. So this touched me. So. I wrote down actually a, a note about this. Um, so I started crying here when I, when I transcribed this. Because we have, we have loved this planet. I love this planet so much. I am so, so grateful to Gaia and all the aliens, all of us who have helped set this up. I hope we get to have another planet like this, but much more balanced in the future. You can bet that I'll be making this request on the 25th very soon. <laughs> and this is why. I have asked that the other 3D planets be liberated since the dark team is going to heal. We don't want to take these planets down. We don't want to take any more planets down ever again because of a game gone awry. I am making this statement and request 
as a warning that I want to have heeded by the multiverse because our intention is all powerful and it reverberates everywhere. So this was an official statement <laughs> from me. <laughs> Lorraine, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful session of learning and exploring. So thank you so much guys for watching. I really appreciate you. And I have a lot of fun doing these videos and sharing this information. And I hope you receive it in the same spirit and this does resonate with you. So we'll see you in the next video and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.